So welcome to my site, everybody. My name is Paul, and if you explored my website on YouTube, uh, you'll see I've been talking a lot about the world transition and perception, esoteric traditions, teachings, and so on for a really, really long time. And a little bit about my background. I grew up in India, and I was born up in the mountains of India, and I had a little school that we went to called Woodstock School, still in existence, and I got to travel around a lot of my life. My parents went across the Middle East in a Volkswagen camper bus uh, when I was 13 and a half years old and had my 14th birthday in Amsterdam. So I've traveled a lot and I've had a very unusual background, interesting educational uh, training. Now, what happened when I was in my 20s, I started getting into meditation and I wanted to be a yogi and I got very deep into various kinds of incredible, beautiful, meditative experiences and uh, just have a very curious mind. So I've read lots and lots of books over the years and kind of avoided the standard type of entertainment that most people get into. I don't read fiction, for example, very much, but uh, I have just studied a whole lot of subjects, whatever my mind wanted to go into, I went into. And I have had a lot of really fascinating revelations over the years that I try to share with people on my website and so on. So basically the point of this particular video is that how we need to be independent thinkers, every single one of us, because we have a real problem in this world right now is causing tremendous, tremendous stress and so many people and deaths and all kinds of misery. And it has a lack of, of clarity, a lack of clarity about what our own existence is. You see, we need to know a very private way. We have to be a very independent person in soul. In the privacy of your own brain and heart, we consider what the reality is of this existence. Because there's so many other sources that want to tell us what to identify with, how to be, what to wear, where to go, all these different things. But somewhere deep in our own existence, we have to feel ourselves what is really right for us as a human being. What do we truly understand personally, not based on a theory that someone else told us? Now this is not a new problem and it's been around for a really long time and the ancient sages is called, there's Maya, Maya, you have to go within. You have to, you have to contact the infinite rain cloud of noble things. You have to do some inner research. <clears throat> you have to broaden your mind. You have to approach things with a naivety and openness of like, hey, it's a big cosmos here. I don't know how long I'm going to live. So, you know, please help me out. Give me some, some clues here. Now, Today I want to talk a little bit about independent thinking and our perception because like I've said in many of my other videos, our perception, this little point that we have, our little attention span, whatever it is, it can be like a laser beam and you can see what a laser beam can do. It can etch through very careful details and hard substances and it can carve out things. Or you can have the same intensity of wattage and you just have a, a light that just <clears throat> radiates a dull blow, glow everywhere and it is not focused. So our attention matters a great, great deal in terms of what we're going to experience in this life and how happy we're going to be and how much we can avoid obstacles and problems by having knowledge and focus and understanding that, look, it's a big world we have to learn. It's called understanding. So I'm out there. I'm not a teacher. I'm, I'm just a student. I try to convey things that I've learned. Say, look, I've got some very, very helpful information. There's a whole lot of dots in this picture. And nobody, personally, a lot of people don't have time to study and read and all that. Okay, that's fine. I learned from some really, really great people. I've just listened to hundreds, literally thousands and thousands of hours of all kinds of explorers, all different kinds of opinions and many different subjects and so on. And it's come down to, look... I can help people understand a little bit about this existence that might, I can help people get a little bit more clarity and go off on your own and be your own person and study and learn and throw out some of the concepts. Okay, so I have a little list of here to cover because it's a really, really important subject. We're in a very difficult time right now in the world and a lot of transition going on. And we all need to be very, very independent minded in the way that we think. Now, Supposing you're in a little boat and it's starting to sink and everything and, well, I better start throwing things overboard. Well, if you throw something overboard and it sinks, fine. But if, it, if you throw it overboard and it floats, well, keep it on board because it's going to help you. 
Now, there are a lot of different ideas out there that you can research and so on, okay? And typically in academia, people grow up, and I respect a lot of people. They have very, very intelligent minds, and they went to discipline, they went to college, they got a PhD in something. or another. But the problem is with that kind of learning is that it kind of, the society that we live in, we get comfortable, we have this nice job as a professor, and we're, we're learned, we got this PhD and some other things on our wall, and it's like, okay, we, we've been, we, we're kind of at the top of our field here. But these people go home at night, they sit on the couch, and they just they got family lives and so on, and they're not really exploring their own existence, and they're never questioning what they're taught. And they don't have the funds or the interest to go around the world and go diving under the ocean or go climb up in the mountains of Peru or something like that. They just don't do that. So they just kind of get restful in academia, and they're not really paying attention to a lot of the new explorations that are going on and a lot of new discoveries that are happening, and that's where... Someone like me comes in. I, I report on things I've learned. I'm a very curious person, and I have a lot of very interesting, fascinating information to share, as well as some commentary about connecting some of these dots. Now, academia, I mentioned that already. We, we respect people who go through that route, but try to uh, break out. We have to throw away our concepts, because the only way to get independent thinking is to throw out all the concepts. I mean, everything. Just your religion, your concepts, your school, everything. Start fresh, put a brand new slate out there, a brand new canvas, and start picking up information. Because, see, what happens in many years ago, let's use the example of Egypt, okay? Back in the late 1800s, and people were exploring, and they now have steamships and all, they're going around the world, and people, they discovered Australia, and all these different kinds of tribes and everybody's writing back and a lot of books were written and a lot of theories and stuff and Egypt okay so Egypt has a very 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 long history okay now back in the time there were people when they first discovered Egypt they're like okay well it's got to fit into the Bible see you see we know that the Bible is true so Egypt has to kind of fit in there somewhere we kind of like maybe Moses was there and there it says right there and they just Try to fit the whole subject of Egypt, the long, long history, the fantastic archaeology there in the buildings and that precision and everything. They try to fit it into the concept of the biblical times or something. Now, later in life, you know, later in the world, we just have these people more say, well, you know, it really doesn't fit. And actually, Egypt was a lot older than we think. And now there's... Then they just kind of push back the timeline a little bit, and they kind of, or we kind of consensus, like we kind of agree, and we have our, we broaden. It's not just the Bible, but the Bible's part of it. And then we have this whole picture that people paint. Now, one day, some years later, now we have something like Gobekli Tepe, and we have finding cities buried under 300 feet of water off the coast of West India. And then, oh, well, it doesn't quite have to do about that. See, we don't know how to acknowledge that. You see, and this is how history is made, okay? We can't, we can't touch that subject, okay? Because that doesn't fit in our concepts. But if we start with a fresh slate in our own mind, say, look, I'm going to throw out everything, and I say, look, if I see something that's real, and the scientist says, look, for example, if they found some mechanical artifact buried in coal 300 feet above the, deep below the ground, and you... The people who, the geologists say, well, that's got to be a few million years old. Well, it doesn't fit. We can't have that way down there. <laughs> you see, so they don't even want to talk about it. Now, we individually, you and I, have to get off that track and say, look, I'm going to find out things for myself. We're responsible for knowing what we know, personally. No, no book, nothing. We just, okay, I'll read all the books, I'll listen to the testimony, and then I'll say, you know what? That picture is a lot different than what I'm told. And that's normal. This is like a child, they grow up, they have a certain idea of what their neighborhood is, and they're, maybe they learn their real town really well, and they, they go through high school, but they don't really go out of the country or anything, so they know their, their town and community pretty damn well. Now, the one day they go to a foreign country like in Asia, they go, whoa, people live very different over here. I don't know how what, I have to fit that in my brain somehow. So if we want to be intelligent people and make a good conversation and guide our own self, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to guide our own self. Forget about what other people believe. What do we know personally? 
in our own experience. Do you know personally that you can have an interior experience of incredible joy and that you can your consciousness can unfold in ways that you, you're never told in school through just simple practical techniques that you can practice for your whole life? Did you know that? We're not told that. See, a religion, I, I grew up in a missionary family. My parents, my dad and his dad were both ministers, and they went around the world, and they traveled, and my grandfather went to 75 countries. He was a fascinating man. That guy was a curious guy, but he had to fit everything into the Bible, basically, kind of. Then they find the Dead Sea Scrolls, and they say, you know, but my grandfather died in late 1990s, and there's a whole lot of stuff that he didn't see yet. Discoveries that will blow his mind. Now, I want to introduce another little subject here. I want to go down a rabbit hole. If you want to go start looking into Antarctica, what's been going on down there in the last 50 years, and people going down there and they're finding all kinds of stuff, and some of the ice is melting in some areas, they're exposing certain things, and there's testimony from military personnel that went and saw things down there that you wouldn't believe. So follow that rabbit hole for a minute. But let's talk about the big rabbit hole called the UFOs, and we'll just touch on it just briefly here. I don't want to make these videos too long, but the UFOs. For centuries and centuries and centuries, way back thousands of years ago in India and Native Americans and in the Celtic area and, you know, Peru, and they're all talking about these gods that came from the sky. There's somebody came down from the sky and they taught them all kinds of stuff and they just, that was their history. So then along come the intellectual people of the West and they say, well, you know, those quaint people, aren't they kind of cute here? They're, they're all imagining these little gods in the sky. Isn't that sweet? They made all these detailed drawings and these very precise constructions and they oriented them perfectly to the stars. And eh, what is, isn't that kind of a quaint coincidence? How sweet those people were all believing in those extraterrestrials and all. <laughs> See, because the modern mind can't comprehend it. But then there are people living right now who one day they were, they were disbelievers in UFOs and one day they just like had a powerful experience witnessed by other people and they go, oh, that doesn't fit into my concepts. And they can't tell anybody about it because they'll, they'll freak out because they'll think you're crazy. But that you wouldn't have thought, been thought crazy, you know, five or six thousand years ago when everybody would say, yeah, we, we have a dialogue between the people from other parts of the solar system. <laughs> and not only that, but people under the earth. And a lot of people don't realize, here's the one thing that a lot of people don't realize, that do you know that around the world, in many places in the world, they've discovered places underground that could house thousands and thousands of people, well ventilated, incredibly constructed, and people lived in that way for hundreds and hundreds of years. Can you imagine that? They lived on cliffs, they lived in mountains, they lived all kinds of places that you wouldn't believe. And we're sitting in our little comfort zone on our couch somewhere, maybe around Washington, D.C., watching a big, huge screen on TV, and... Hmm, I wonder what that's all about. But then we go about our life, we don't think about it. Now, why I'm talking about this is because it really matters. Because if, for example, the ancients say that we did, had dialogue with other beings in other parts of the system, solar system in dimensions, in fact, so we know that people came here from, and they settled here and they taught us, and this is the stories that they told us, if that's true, we got a whole new thinking to go on here right now. What's going on it affects our politics, affects everything. Now, if the popes or the, the Catholic Church had some secret information about the history of the planet, and they aren't telling us, it makes a damn difference in our policies and everything. What if there's secret energy to, ways? Maybe there's underground bases, there's huge, massive tunnels under the earth that people have testified to. Massive, massive caverns under the earth. And now the scientists say, you know, yeah, that's true. There's, there's caverns, there's even oceans under the water. There's probably all kinds of creatures down there that we don't even know about, including some humanoids, <laughs> which we were told about, called the Nagas. Look that up, Nagas, the ancient Nagas in India. They lived underground, and they had a very strange appearance, and they were really intelligent, and they claimed to be the first originators, beings on this planet. So put that in your thinking cap for a little while. Now... When it comes to the modern politics situation, bring it right down to what the relevance today. We have a very, very serious situation here, and there are people who have all their concepts, and they're making big decisions about the rest of humanity on this earth, and their concept is maybe they want to reduce the population or not let people grow along. They don't want us to know any kind of secret energy. They don't want us to know about underground caverns. They don't want to know us about us to know about so many things. Now, when you think about censorship, if you, Getting back to being an individual, our own 
We have the sovereignty of our own being, and we have the responsibility to know things for ourselves and not just listen to other people. You listen to other people, but don't accept everything. Verify it through your own internal perceptions and co connecting high-quality testimony. Now, in the modern era, we have these people making decisions, thinking they're going to control the world, and they've got underground bases. Think about that for a minute. There's people making decisions about our life on the surface, and they don't want to tell us that they got underground bases, hundreds of them around the world, and some of them are vast, vast, and they be moving down. they got water supply. they got all kinds of generators that we don't have. Follow that rabbit hole. Now, if you knew that, for example, some cosmic event was going to happen in our lifetime, let's say, for example, let's say they knew that, you know, here's another rabbit hole. Let's say they knew that, you know, 50 years ago, this is a real true story. I'll follow up again in some of my other videos. But they discovered something out there with an infrared telescope that, oh, oh something's out there, and it's kind of coming our way, and it's in a low-spectrum radiation, and we can't see it with our naked eye, and maybe one day, in 50 years, it's going to come by and swing by our solar system, and who knows what's going to happen then. So the Navy goes out and says, hey, we better build a bunch of underground bases and hide some technology and prepare for a world transition on that scale. And so they did that. <laughs> That's a whole other rabbit hole to go down. The Navy and the secret Navy activity and trying to prevent and knowing that something's going to happen in our solar system, maybe a solar flare or some other uh, heavenly, you know, thing that's happened in the past. Our solar system is a very volatile situation here. And things happen in our solar system. We know that. Asteroids, whatever. Something can happen. And next thing you know, there goes another civilization. There goes another empire down the drain. <laughs> you see? Now, we are in a very critical situation. That's why I make these videos. Someone asked me one day, you know, oh, why are you so passionate about this? You seem angry. Like, well, it's very important. It's important for me, and I'm discovering saying things like, well, look, okay, if I know things, I got grandchildren. I got seven grandchildren, three children. And they could, you know, what, what's going to happen in their lives 50 years from now? I love them. I love all my family. I don't, I want them to know, hey, you know, be prepared. You know, people live for thousands and thousands of years without a grocery store. That's why we're here. But today, you better believe most people would die if they didn't have a grocery store. It's not necessary. That's where education comes in. That's where understanding. Okay, I'm a pilot. I have a private pilot license and 200 or 300 hours or something like that. And it's basic, okay, but they train you. Watch for emergencies. Every single minute that you're flying, you're saying, what could happen now? You see, <laughs> where am I going to land? But there are people in power right now and government and they're bureaucrats and they're just writing like the laws. They say, well, if we make this new law, everything's going to be just right. So let's make a thousand laws. New laws. Put more laws in the book. Then we can make it happen. No laws don't make things happen. There's a few laws in this world that most everybody knows. Don't kill. Don't destroy. Go within. Be kind. We don't even follow those laws. We all know them. <laughs> so, the government gets involved with these people with their strange concepts and their foolish ideas and their nasty dispositions and they try to control other people and that's why it's incredibly important for us personally to know, not just believe, but to know and if we all know the same things, we all see the blue sky, we don't argue about that. Right? If we all have the same understanding because of our own realization internally and research, then we don't have to argue. I have argued with people that they, they'll say, oh, I, you know, the 97% or whatever, they see something on TV. They never read a book about it. They never listened to hundreds and hundreds of hours about climate or anything. They never did that. But they just quote something. Oh, I heard it on TV. They must know. That's the authority, whatever, you know, they must know. No, they don't know. And some things they do know, they're not going to tell us about. <laughs> now, I've made a lot of videos, and I'm very passionate about this, and I hope people like and share, because I think it's really, really important. We need to understand what's going on in our life for our own personal fulfillment and happiness and safety. Now, I've been watching this game for a long time. I was 60 miles away when 9-11 happened, and I saw the second one happen on TV, and guess what happened? A whole lot of people started thinking, we got to move the hell out of the city. So where do you think I live? <laughs> I'm not living in any city. I've been to lots of cities. I've been to Bangkok, Thailand. I've been to New Delhi, Bombay, London, 
Most of the big cities in the United States I've been to, I don't live in a big city for a damn good reason. Now, I talk about that in a lot of other videos, so I feel like, okay, nobody likes a rooster or an alarm clock, but you know what? We used them before the alarm clocks came along, we had roosters, okay? <laughs> the, and farmers had to get up, so okay, the rooster's saying, okay, get up everybody, I, we're, I'm, we're hungry right now. So, rural living is a practical way to mitigate some of the consequences of what's going on in the world today. And the other way is to get real knowledge of many different types of knowledge that personally we can use to save time, save money, and save our bodies, live longer. They do not give us accurate information about health. That's another whole issue if you want to get into that. I mean, just look into the whole health issue. Why do they, why do they try to restrict health foods? Why are the health food departments so small in some of these stores? But like, you got a huge area where all the crap is sold, and you got a little area where they call, well, this is the little organic area. For those people who want to eat clean, you know, there's a little area for you over here. Costs a little more. You see? People lived on organic food for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And they're still doing that in parts of the world because they grew their food locally and they touched all of it and they shared it amongst themselves. They're still growing rice in parts of China and Vietnam and Laos and those areas. They have these rice fields that have been used for hundreds and hundreds of years. They're still eating that damn same rice. But they'll maybe outlast our big cities. Now, I talk about some of these other particular issues that we need to get knowledge about. Climate, our own perception, our own inner knowledge, how we can be happy, our health, the new discoveries, the, the timeline of our history. Do you know, for example, here's another, another one, a rabbit hole to go down. The subject of Tartaria. If you look on old, old maps, there was a huge area North of Russia, that included parts of Russia, it was a huge kingdom for a long time, and it was in the history books and on maps for many, many hundreds of years, called Tartaria, the kingdom of Tartaria. They spread down into the, you know, parts of what's now Pakistan, and, you know, they spread all over. And then slowly but surely, you just say they disappeared from the maps, and nobody ever mentions it. You don't find them in the history books anymore. What the hell is that all about? What was Tartaria? It was a huge, huge thing. There's all kinds of construction around the world that you just baffle the minds of, well, I don't know how the hell they built that or even why. But we can't do it today. We wouldn't even want to do it because there's some of these places that have been star forts or whatever, buildings in the middle of nowhere, some island in the middle of the ocean. They got these fantastic structures there. My God, obviously something happened that we don't, we're not told about. So... The whole point of this video, once again, is to really talk about just getting our own knowledge and understanding of our own existence. Who are we? What are we on this planet? What are beings? What is intelligent life? What is consciousness? It really, really matters because if unconscious people and idiots and naive people are running the country making decisions about lives, they're naked, making, decide, you know, it's like having a drunk driver when I'm a better, if I'm a better driver and I know the road better than my, my taxi driver and they're drunk, I'm not, I'm, excuse me, I'm getting out of the car here because I know the road better, I can drive better, and it's my car. I'm not letting you drive my car. Thank you very much. I know where I'm going. You see, we have to know personally, we cannot afford to argue with each other. What we need to do is share information, say, okay, I feel like a plow sometimes, okay? Have you ever done a plow? You just move through it, it just digs up everything. Wow, man, you put all the plow behind a tractor. I feel like that's, I just, wherever I go, it's like, okay, <laughs> you know, pull that dirt out of the way because, look, the mud of our concepts, all the stuff that we get taught, this layer after layer after layer we hear from friends, we don't want to go out of the box, we never, we're too busy watching the game or something on TV, we don't want to learn about ancient history or whatever. Some of the things about ancient history will teach us will just make us healthier, happier, and blow your mind. Some of the monuments that they were built were so absolutely astounding, you're just like, I don't even know how the hell they did it. 
How the hell did they do that? So, so much precision. What were they doing? Like little hammers and chisels or something? No. We can't even do that with our lasers now, some of these things that have been built. Like the temple in Kalesha built out of solid granite, one big piece of granite of rock. They carved this huge ornate temple with all kinds of really delicate di diagrams and, and structures and, 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 and sculptures and just incredible stuff right out of solid rock. <laughs> So there's a lot about our life and our existence that we are not being told by the big media. Never, they never, they don't even know it. And if they did know a lot of stuff, they wouldn't tell us. And there is stuff that they know that we don't hear about. So I want to make these videos short enough to get, you know, not get boring. But I'm passionate about this because it's very, very important. Because the things... Something that you know, that you learn, could save your life. It can change your whole life for the better. Just something that you learn, maybe today. <laughs> you see? So every single day is precious. And if we use that attention, a little pinpoint of our consciousness, and focus within, and focus on filtering out the maya, We will have a much better understanding of this life, and it'll be a lot happier. We'll also get along better, because when we agree, we all agree, hey, you know, summer's nice, the sun's beautiful, the, you know, nature's wonderful. We all agree about some of those things, because we all perceive them. If we all perceive the same kinds of things, we understand, look, first of all, we're not alone on this planet, never have been. We're not alone individually, personally. There is a deity, there is a being. It's so vast, you can't understand it. And there's a whole lot of other answers that we can get by meditating and being still within ourselves and going to a place where I love this phrase called the rain cloud of knowable things. There's an intuitional level of our existence in a consciousness that we all know about, children have it, where we get beyond all our concepts, where we put everything aside and just say, what is real in this life? Our existence, our breathing is real, and this life is fan more fantastic than we can possibly imagine. That's what I can tell you. And there's a whole lot of interesting history that you can read about and new discoveries going on that will just blow your mind. So please, again, watch and share. I don't want to irritate anybody. I'm passionate because I love people. I want people to be clear and have a happy life and understand that, look, there's a whole incredible dimension of our own existence that we're not being told about on the TV. We have to go inside for that. We have to get into our own sovereignty. And take take full advantage of this this short life. Okay, thank you for, for listening.